The Tales of Lemondor Woods by Siglin de Francesca Book 1 The Way of Gnome Chapter 3 The Golden Rules of Gnome As one might expect, Gus had quite a time getting to sleep that night. He kept on thinking about what had happened in the woods. Had it really happened? Had he just imagined it? He must go back and find out. But would he be able to find that entrance to the woods again? Would he be able to get in? Would he change size again? Would he find Mossy and Meese? Were there really other gnomes in the woods? Over and over he asked those questions until at last he drifted off imagining that he was walking next to a silky field mouse the size of a dog. The next morning Gus awoke out of a most amazing dream. He had dreamed that he was a gnome and that he lived deep in a forest in a house in the trunk of a tree. Wait, he thought to himself, that wasn't a dream. There is a gnome in the forest and I saw him. I must get back to those woods right away. Gus jumped up, ate his breakfast and finished his chores in no time. His papa was already at work when Gus lovingly ruffled his baby sister's curls and kissed his mother goodbye. He told her that he was going into the woods and he would probably be gone much of the day. Quickly Gus made his way across the stream, through the gate and along the path that wound to the west side of Apple Tree Hill. He walked slowly and crouched down to look for the opening in the underbrush, almost passing it. It was hard to believe he had fit through such a small opening. But this must be the place, Gus thought as he crept on his knees and entered into the dark tunnel of Bracken. Just as before, he found himself in the shaded undergrowth. Leaves, vines and fern fronds swept across his face and back as he crawled deeper into the woods. Soon the thick foliage cleared. The sun freckled down through a tree's high branches and he was surprised to see an enormous snail, one big enough to ride on, slowly creep by. Gus had returned. Just as with the day before, Gus saw Mossy and Meese on the path. This time they were walking towards him from the other direction. Gus excitedly ran up to them, gushing with questions. Good morning, Mr Mossy. Hello, Meese. Look, I came back. I found my way. I'm here again. Oh, I have so many questions to ask you. Mossy, where did you come from? I mean, originally, have you always been here? You said there are other gnomes in the woods. How many are there? Can I meet them? And please, please, will you tell me how to get to the mountain that I saw? Whoa, whoa, slow down, my boy. And a good morning to you, Gus, said Mossy with a smile. Why don't we go back to my place? I'm sure I have some more of that seed cake left that we can share. Mossy and Meese had just been to visit Gilly Gnome. Gilly is a gardening gnome and Mossy was bringing home a large basket of some bright coloured vegetables. Gus offered to carry the basket and marvelled at the three large green round things that were in it. When he realised they were green peas, he was reminded all over again of the magic of his being made small. On the way, Mies asked Gus if he had had any trouble finding the path. Gus said the directions he had given him were very clear and thanked him for his help. Back at Mossy's, Gus sat down on the same stump as the day before, and Mossy brought out three pieces of seed cake, one for each of them. They ate it in silence. Although Gus was simply bursting to get some answers, he somehow began to sense that one could not, should not, ever rush a gnome with questions, as he had done. Gus, said Mossy finally, brushing cake crumbs from his beard, you asked me a lot of questions a while ago. I will answer some now. Some of them will have to wait. Yes, Mr. Mossy, I understand, said Gus, who was shifted to sit on the soft moss. Yes, Mr. Mossy, I understand, said Gus, who shifted to sit on the soft moss, anticipating a good story. 
Let me see. Am I right to guess that you have never met a gnome before, Gus? No, sir. I mean, yes, sir, I have not. Well, neither have I met a tall one, that is. Now, I shall tell you my story. And so Mossy began. Long ago, I lived in a Donzy village, far, far from here. My people were good, gentle gnomes, and all followed the way. Gnomes always make a point of teaching their children the way. Um, excuse me, Mr. Mossy, but what is the way you are talking about? I've never heard of that before, asked Gus, rather politely for one so anxious to hear everything. Ah, that's right, a tall one would not know about these things. Well, all respectable gnomes are brought up from an early age, lovingly and carefully, and learn a code of good conduct. This is called the way, or the golden rules of gnome. It is the only way for a gnome to become a gnome. With the gnome's golden rules as a guide, any gnome who goes out into the world will be recognised as a true, gentle gnome, and will be valued as a good friend. The basic tenets of the gnome's golden rule are, he said, counting on his fingers, one, to be kind, always, two, to tell the truth, always, and if you find that you can't, it is better to say nothing, three, to be generous, that is, we always offer a gift when we meet someone, if one doesn't have a gift, then one sings a song, tells a story, or finds some other creative way to give, even if it is just a heartfelt smile. Oh, interrupted Gus, that is why you gave me the yummy seed cake, isn't it? Mossy nodded, smiling, as he continued. Four, keep yourself tidy as best you can. It is a matter of keeping things clean and in order. And five, celebrate every day in some way even if you are by yourself, for each day is a wonder. Find something that is beautiful, find something to appreciate, or just be still and feel gratitude. Or if you are with others, it's fine to share something to eat or drink together. When one lives by these rules, one becomes a gentle gnome. But there is one last thing that is of great importance. As soon as possible, gentle gnomes are expected to find their special gift so that they can then give back to the world. When Mossy finished talking, he sat back and lit his bearberry pipe. All was quiet there in the woods. Mies was asleep and Gus sat silently, counting off on his fingers just as Mossy had done. After some moments, he looked up at Mossy and said, I think I can remember the rules, Mossy. The first was to be kind, then to tell the truth always, then to give gifts, well, to be generous, Mossy corrected him. Oh yes, to be generous, then to be tidy, he said disconcertedly, looking down at his dirty hands. A little dirt on your hands is not as bad as living in clutter and having cluttered thoughts, offered Mossy when he saw Gus's expression. Gus considered that for a moment. When he thought he understood what Mossy said, he continued, Let's see, there was another rule. Party, that's it. No, celebrate, always celebrate. I like that one. But what was that last thing you said, Mossy? I didn't really understand the last one. Well, Gus, that is a challenge to everyone, I think. It's not one of the five rules of Gnome, yet it is one of the most important things we ever have to work out. It is to find your gift. That means your talent, the work that you are to do in your life. And then, of course, if you have a gift, then you rejoice in giving it away. Do you know what your gift is, Mossy? Mossy looked down at him, smiling, as he squinted through a curl of woodsy smoke and nodded slowly. Mossy had been thinking. He had been reflecting on how much he was enjoying the company of this curious, inquisitive boy this fledgling tall one. For other than the mice in his life, Mossy had always been something of a loner. But Mossy was beginning to sense that his life was about to change. Well now, I believe that I have a glimpse of what my gift is, Gus. I believe I do, he said at last. 
but he said no more about that and was quiet for a time. 